Well, it's two weeks before Christmas, and this year, like a lot of other years, there's people struggling trying to find what really Christmas means to them. And I wanted to share a poem that I wrote. It's kind of special. I wrote it in the year 2001, because there were a lot of people fighting to find Christmas that year as well. The poem came at the end of my first book called A Poet's Last Stand. The name of the poem is Looking for Christmas. I went looking for Christmas the other day. We just had a light snowfall the day before. Yes, it was December, and that magical date was approaching. But something just didn't seem right. Something was missing. The ingredients were all there, or so it seemed. But inside there wasn't that special feeling, and I was determined to find it, no matter how long it took or how far I had to go. I started by putting up my tree. This always helps. Seeing it in the living room, all covered with lights and bulbs, icicles dangling from its branches. It was a very beautiful sight. I did feel a moment of warmth deep inside, but no, this wasn't it. So I decided to do just a little bit more. I went into my attic and found the boxes. The boxes that I had stored the lights in. You know the ones. Almost everyone has them. Stashed away in the attic or the basement. Anyway, I strung the strands from nail to nail. Nails that had been put there years before. Just placed there for this one purpose. And once more the outside of the house looked beautiful. But still something was missing. It seemed maybe that this something, something that I was not to find by myself. So I decided to find a place, a place where others had found Christmas. So I got in my car and drove down the street. I drove to the mall. I walked from store to store, looked at all the wonderful displays, displays that each store had spent so much time, effort, and money putting together. And of course there were the people so many people, each trying to decide whether to get this or that. Not a lot of Christmas spirit here, though. There was a Santa section, however. Children standing in a long line, just for the opportunity to sit in the lap, the lap of a man they'd never met, waiting ever not so patiently for their turn. Their turn to whisper to them what it was that they really wanted for Christmas. There was a bit of magic here, for this man really did approach his job well. With such a good demeanor, I stood there for some time just watching the looks on each child's face when it was finally their turn. Yes, there was a bit of Christmas here, but not exactly what I was looking for. And it was getting late, so I left. On the way home, I spotted a small church. In front of this church, Someone had erected a lifetime nativity scene. It wasn't much, but there were several cars sitting in the parking lot. And it looked like there was a small choir all bundled up against the cold, singing from a stage. I had to stop and see this. So I did. There was a short line of people that formed outside the makeshift stable. Instinctively, I got in line in front of me there was a small family, a mother, a father, and their daughter, a beautiful child, who could not have been over seven years old. Yes, we're going shopping, dear, I heard the mother tell her daughter, just as soon as we stopped by here to see the baby Jesus. It didn't take long, there weren't a lot of people in line. The small family stood there for several minutes, standing in front of the small wooden railing that the people of the church had erected to keep their display safe from those, those who would rather touch then look at such a display. Each of the three seemed to take their take in every aspect, looking at the different characters. They all stood there holding hands. Yes, this was a beautiful sight. And the nativity scene was not that bad either. The parents had decided that it was time to leave. No one had wanted to hold up the line that long, and it was quite cold outside. As they turned to leave, the daughter turned quickly pulled her hand away from her mother's. She ducked under the fence and started towards the manger. Before her mother could say a single word, 
Her daughter stood in front of the major, just for an instant. She removed her coat and tucked it gently around the figure of the baby. She then turned with a single tear in her eye and hurried back to her parents. I didn't want him to get cold, is all that she said. We all stood there for quite some time, not really knowing what would happen next. The father reached down, took his daughter in her, his arms, and held her very close. I heard him almost whisper, It looks like you're going to be getting a new coat for Christmas. Here I had gone spent a whole day simply looking for the true Christmas spirit. And somehow, like real magic, the magic that is associated with the special season and through the actions of a single child, it had found me. Merry Christmas, everyone.